We may have gotten a new episode on Christmas Eve last week, but what better way to usher in the new year by getting a brand new Star Trek Discovery episode on New Year's Eve. Join myself and the team here at Trek Central as we dive into the realm of Star Trek once again, with Discovery Season 3, Episode 12. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. Episode 12 of Season 3 is titled There is a Tide, though just like last week's episode having a different name upon release, so does this episode, with it originally being called For the Good of the People. This episode is written by Kenneth Lynn, who had previously written Episode 8 of the season, The Sanctuary. That episode was the first introduction of Asira, so who better to carry on her role in the show? Of course, the episode is directed by the one and only Jonathan Frakes. Boy, do we love all seeing his name pop up on the title sequence. Don't forget, we've covered Star Trek Discovery Season 3 weekly here on Trek Central, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the team. You can also follow us on social media for the latest news and information from the Star Trek universe. Spoilers alert, we'll be discussing this episode in full detail, so if you want to avoid spoilers, here is your opportunity to turn away now. Directly following on from the events of last week's episode, where the Discovery had been captured by the Emerald Chain, the Viridian, the Chain's flagship, is pretending to fire on the Discovery, while Asara tries to use this to fool the Federation into letting her into the headquarters. We get the return of Zera, the courier from all the way back in episode 2. He managed to survive the ice, but his hand did not. I actually really like Zeris here, as he has however limited, more familiarity with a Discovery than a Syrah. We finally learn why the transwarp conduits are so dangerous, and that as they are filled with debris. Makes sense that ships would have blown up while in the corridor, and with the Federation putting out fires everywhere else, they probably don't have the resources to clean it all up right now. And aren't we glad that Discovery keeps leaving the shuttle bay doors open, as Burn and Burke managed to ram their ship into the Discovery. We even get this cool scene where the hull plates of the Nautilus Morph make it even more protected for its ramming manoeuvre. Worf would be proud. And of course, Commander Burnham sneaks off the ship and Book gets apprehended by the chain of regulators. We have gotten numerous diehard S episodes in Star Trek before, from Deep Space Nine's The Siege to Enterprise's Shockwave, but this episode was probably the most diehard episode we have seen, with even a barefoot and bleeding Burnham taking the part of John McClane. We really should have gotten a scene where the bridge turbulent opens to a body as I'm writing for Burnham saying, I have a phaser, ho ho ho, just to complete how diehard this episode actually is. Just me with that one? Okay. While we do have Burnham being in her own diehard episode, the bridge crew, though some nice use of Morse code, which you apparently learned in year one of Starfleet Academy, are able to escape capture and also scam the life science sensors in order to help Michael in her quest to retake the ship. While the action beats of this episode are fun, I will have to say most discussion that will come out of this episode and hopefully shape stories going forward are the non-action elements of this episode, named between Stamets and the chain scientist, Invigilator Aurelius, played by the great Kenneth Mitchell, and the negotiation between Asira and Dadmal Vance. I have to say, having Kenneth Mitchell back as Aurelius, who we'll discuss in just a minute, is fantastic, and we really have to appreciate that the Discovery writers and creators really create these fantastic roles to bring Kenneth Mitchell back into the Star Trek universe. And honestly, I loved him in this role, I really hope we get to see more of him as the series goes on, maybe season 4. Let's start with Aurelius and Stamets. Aurelius views very highly the Syrah and the Chain, and how they've helped planets which the Federation have left on their own, such as Courageon, Book's home planet such as developing a prejudice for their seed locus issue. However, from discussion it seems like Aurelio has a very cuddled view of the chain, only seeing their positives and not the negatives of slave labour and forcing plants to cooperate with them. He also believes that the Federation is hoarding the most illegal technology that Discovery has, instead of sharing it with other ships and freeing the galaxy from the need of dilithium, which technically he is right about. We see that as Stamets and Aurelio are having discussions, Aurelio still believes in the chain, but getting doubts about how Asira leads it. And this is where we get the Asira and Vance discussion in the episode. She beams over to Federation HQ and sits down with Dadmal Vance and negotiate. Negotiate what you ask? Well, they negotiate the Emerald Chain and the Federation joining forces. The Federation is a collection of planets, whereas the Chain is a collection of mercantile exchanges and having well funded scientists, whereas most Federation scientists are probably working on putting out fires on multiple worlds for multiple reasons. The Chain is free to prioritise other projects such as finding a way to replicate the mycelial technology. Not falling to unite just yet, Asira proposes instead an armistice between the two factions, but the Admiral Vance will only accept if Asira stands trial for a crime. We see that Asira's priorities are bet with deal being for the good of the people, are empty if it means she can't be in control, and with that, the negotiations end. 
There we kind of get the clue to the original episode's name for the good of a people. I do kind of like the episode's name as for good of a people. I don't know. It's, you make up your mind. Which one sounds better? Back up all the discovery, Asara has a turn and kills Rin in front of Book and Aurelio, with Book even giving up the location of a Dilithium planet. This will shock many fans, as the actor who played Rin, Noah Avabek Kaz, has been a really fa nice face in the Trek community, appearing on numerous podcasts and other channels, with some great interviews from him. Maybe the fact he was on so many podcasts would have given it away that he was going to die this season. But oh well, let's hope he can return as a different species next season. That I would love to see and really wouldn't surprise me. Commander Burnham frees Paul Stamets and ejects him from Discovery, knowing he's in the prime component of a spore drive and that Asai would need him to operate the ship. Obviously Stamets is furious about this as he's leaving Hugh and Adira, his new family, to die in the nebula. He even says that they all came to the future for Michael's sake, and her doing this, even if the best of the Federation, isn't the best for Stamets. Again, a bit of a clue back to the, the good of the people here. And finally, we get the return of a plot thread which I feel may have been very behind the scenes this season, and that is with the sphere data. Earlier in this episode, the chain had found some code they couldn't control, and it seems like it moved into the dot droids. The 32nd century dot droids, namely dot 23s. They even have different colour styles to match presumably the function, with gold, red and yellow eye lighting. We are going to get the bridge crew with an army of dots trying to retake the ship from the evil Sarah next episode, and for that, I cannot wait. All in all, I really like this episode. Not only did it have a good amount of action with the diehard sequence of this episode, but like I said previously, the negotiation sections of this episode were quite meaty and maybe even worth an entire video discussing them. We've currently got some theories going on about what's going on with the Federation itself right now, and I have a feeling we'll discuss these theories probably next week, so keep an eye out for that. Meanwhile, Asylum and Chain become a big time player on the Galactic stage in this episode, really showing they are a new faction alongside that of the Romulans, Klingons, with their own culture and government, with a Congress. However, much I love seeing these old factions in this world, it's always great to see some new ones getting developed, and that's exactly what I want to see in this new 32nd century world we are in. Now my main criticism comes with this episode and kind of this whole season, that would be in the form of The Burn. Last week in the episode 12 we got to learn about Sakal. sorry in episode 11 we got to learn about Sakal, which is obviously the boy or Kelpian child who somehow caused The Burn. Now basing on reasoning and obviously reactions to this, not a lot of people are happy about this. In our own view, I personally say I am not overly fascinated with the idea of a child causing the burn, which has somehow almost destroyed the galaxy in a way via disrupting dilithium and warp travel, etc. However, I am willing to believe there might be something else behind it. My criticism for episode 12, what I'm going to call for the good of the people, even though I know it's not that name, in a way is we do not get any new information on the burn or any development of this plot thread. My main concern is for episode 13, which will be the final of Discovery Season 3, is that we're going to push all of the burn resolution and storyline into one episode. Now unless this episode is an hour long, it's going to be quite a bit of a, a, a hot shocked episode, like how are we going to fit all of this in and how is it all going to make sense? I don't know, I just feel like the Burn storyline has been slightly pushed to the side. Now it could carry the Burn storyline on to season 4, via re revealing some sort of enemy or some person behind the whole thing in the next episode, that I would love to see. But right now, the Burn storyline isn't really impressing me well. Originally, I was loving it because it's some great mystery, something that's affected the galaxy to explore. I'm strongly thinking that Sokol is almost a red herring. While it may seem like he caused a burn, it could be something else manipulating it or causing these events. We don't know just yet. That is my major criticism for this episode, in the fact there. Now one thing I really liked is Paul Stamets' moment for Burnham, where he says we all came to the future for you. Everyone on this ship, for Discovery, left behind their lives for Michael Burnham and to do their duty to protect the sphere data from Section 31, Control, Leland, etc. They gave their lives, and you know, their future lives essentially in a way, to support Michael Burnham and the Discovery with the sphere data, etc. Like Paul Stamets says, we came to the future for you. People gave up their lives for that. May have lost loved ones, like Tilly won't see her mother again, so he will never see his sister again. All that stuff there. And for that, I don't know, that bit there at the end there really hit home. I just love the way that it was like a really good bit of emotion. Discovery as a show gets criticised quite a lot for its use of emotion, particularly through an abundance of crying scenes which are sometimes off-placed in the season as a whole. I'm not particularly an emotional person when it comes to watching shows myself, there will be a m moments that capture me, and I'm sure many of you are currently watching and reading it such are very different, you know, we all get emotional at our own things. However, Discovery does have an abundance of emotional moments. Which isn't a problem for some, for some however like myself, I'm not particularly a fan of it. However, when Stamps was saying, we came to feature for you, was almost an emotional moment, because these people did give up their lives to support Burnham and, the, and those theater data, etc. I don't know, for that, it was just a very strong bit of writing, I feel. Please do let me know what you think of it down below in the video comment section as per usual. 
I will remain, my strong criticism for this episode primarily is the fact of a lack of development on the burn. Whether it's going to be something that's going to tie us over to season 4 in some sort of cliffhanger ending next episode remains to be seen. Ultimately, we'll be dropping our episode 13, the final episode of Discovery, previewing it next Tuesday, so don't forget to watch that. So yeah. Okay everyone, that does wrap up our weekly review for Star Trek Discovery Season 3. This has been episode 12, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Do let us know what you thought of it down below in the video comment section as per usual. I know we all sometimes have different opinions on the Star Trek episodes, that's the great thing about starting discussion. You tell us what you think, we tell you what you think, etc. We may be live this week on our YouTube channel for a stream, however it is New Year, so I'm going to wish you a Happy New Year if you are celebrating at this time right now, or you're celebrating tomorrow or whenever you're watching this video, we will wish you a Happy New Year for myself, and the Trek Central team. We might not be live this weekend to do various things. If not, we'll definitely be back in January discussing a final episode of Star Trek Discovery. See you then, everyone. If you want to keep us updated with the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Level long and prosper, my friends.